Hey, what's going on guys? So today I'm going to show you guys how to mount a fire extinguisher in your trunk so that your car can go from looking like this to looking like this. Okay, so let's get started here. First things first, we've got a fire extinguisher and we've got a fire extinguisher mount. I got both of these off of Amazon. I think this was like 30 bucks and this was like 20 or 30 bucks as well so all in all it's like 60 bucks for this whole thing which um you know it's a decent chunk of money for what it is but the purpose of having a fire extinguisher in the car is like an insurance policy odds are if you have a stock car you probably don't need a fire extinguisher so you've probably invested some money in your car and you would like to not burn everything to the ground if you happen to screw something up so that's the reason why i'm doing this today just want to show you first everything that comes in the package. This was obviously separate. This comes in the fire extinguisher mount package. It has six of these uh, worm gear type clamps. And um, basically, I think what they recommend, there's a couple different ways you could do this. One would be like if you had like a roll cage type deal, you could mount this to the roll cage through these slots right here and using a couple of these clamps. And the second, which is what I'm going to be doing today, is a couple screw mounts right there. So I'm just going to mount this in the trunk and I'm going to walk you along. It should be a pretty fast video. Famous last words, right? Maybe three hours later we'll be done. No, it should be pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you what I do and so you can see what the options are so here we go okay so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and just take apart these clamps uh, i'm going to go ahead and size my clamps see which one fits on here and is also going to fit through the mount right here probably just use the bigger ones because this fits but it's not going to leave a lot of room to go through the mount so i'm going to use the bigger ones for that these I'm not going to use for my applications. I'm going to set those off to the side. And I'm going to go ahead, and here's how I'm going to do it. Take this all the way apart. And I think you're going to kind of go through. Might be easier said than done here. And this anodizing on the aluminum is not all that great, but that's fine. So yeah, you can see what I've done here is I've kind of routed it through. I'm not really sure how else you would do it. I think that's right, but that should work for my application. So I'm gonna do that to the other one. Okay, so as you can see, I've got both of these on here. I'm going to slide one to the top, one to the bottom. And I'm just going to mount the fire extinguisher in here. Probably kind of one thing to observe here. You can see this part right here pivots into this pin. And then this part has the locking pin that locks through it. So you should probably pay attention to how you orient this so you don't have to do it twice. So I'll slide, I'm gonna slide the mounts or the screws off to the side just because I'm OCD and I want it to look halfway decent. That'll also hide the excess worm part of the clamp. That should be uh, good enough here. Use my drill and cinch everything down. I'm gonna tighten it with a screwdriver just to make sure I got everything tight. 
get it nice and snug with a screwdriver. And there you go. It's a nice tight fit on there. So now we got the fire extinguisher mounted to the top part of the mount. And now it's time to get the mount mounted in the car. I will catch up with you there. Okay, so I've lost a little bit of daylight here. So bear with me on this. I've got a flashlight up here, so hopefully you can see what's going on. As you can see, my old fire extinguisher setup consisted of just this thing flopping around the back of the trunk and rolling every time you'd go around a corner. That's no bueno. Trying to be held in place with a torque wrench and a microfiber towel. And I can tell you how that worked. Not very well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mock this up where I want to put it. Now in my car, this is a Honda S2000. I'd rather not drill into the body if I don't have to. And I have a sub box that I made a long time ago. This is made out of MDF and will work perfectly. So I kind of did a little bit of mocking up off camera and I've decided that I would like to have this pin e easily accessible. So I want it on the left side here. Um, I could put it on the right side, but then, you know, the sub might get in the way, but I'm going to put it on the left hand side just cause it'll look good there. So I'm going to pull to make this easier. I'm going to pull the whole sub box out, pre-drill some holes, mark everything in there. And, um, yeah, I will show you what I do. Okay. So I've got the sub box pulled out of the car here. I'm just going to get it mocked up and I'm going to have to take the fire extinguisher off to actually mount this thing. So I'm just going to mark, I mean, this doesn't have to be perfect or anything, just close. But I'm going to mark this bottom mount with a Sharpie. Just so you can, just so I'll have a point of reference to kind of slide the thing up to after I take the fire extinguisher off. And I'm just going to slide the mount up to those marks. And I'm going to pre-drill a small hole, 1 16th hole, just to give the screw something to bite into and punch through this carpet that I have in my sub box. Because if you've ever tried to screw a screw straight into a sub box before, you know that the carpet will wrap around your screw and tear everything up, especially on a custom made, homemade box. So I'm just going to pre-drill in the center of both of these holes. Okay. So these are the two screws I've decided to use. Um, I just had them in my box here. They're just a Phillips head screw. That's kind of, they have a built-in washer in them and they are kind of a wood screw. I don't really think they're meant for wood, but they're the same like design as a wood screw would be. So I'm going to use these for now because it's what I have. Um, if you had a countersink wood screw, that would probably be best, but I don't have one on hand and all the stores are closed for the night and I'm trying to get this done. So I'm going to go ahead and mount these in here and maybe I'll change it later. Maybe not. It's probably not that critical. Maybe it is critical. Famous last words, right? But I'm going to go ahead and get this started in that pre-drilled hole. one started in the pre-drill hold. All right, there we go. It's all mounted up. I'm going to take you off my uh, helmet cam here and put the camera in closer so you can actually see what's going on. Get this mounted in the car and we'll wrap this thing up. I will go ahead and show how you mount this fire extinguisher back in the mount while it's out of the car because it'll be easier to see. You can see you have this slot right here. You take the slot and you line it up with that pin, it slides right in, pull the locking pin at the top, and that's it, she's in, ready to go. And if you want to quickly release the fire extinguisher, you just grab this pin here, pull it, yank out and up, and it's out, free to go. Hopefully you never have to do that quickly, but it's there if you need it. All right guys, as you can see, I've got the fire extinguisher mounted, subwoofer box back in the car, and I've got the old fire extinguisher out and everything out. Everything's nice and sturdy. If I need to, I can pull this lever, which is easier with two hands, but even got it with one. 
and pull the fire extinguisher right out. You want to lock it back in place. You got to pull the lever out pretty far. There you go. And that is all there is to it. And again, I got this on Amazon. I will uh, let you guys keep you guys posted in the comments how it works out for me. But uh, anyways, that's all I have for today. So uh, thanks for watching.